So block ciphers are a building block for many cryptographic constructions, such as hash functions, encryption schemes, etc. These are key permutations that take in two inputs, a key k and an input x, and produce an input y, sorry, output y. And there are two popular design paradigms for designing block ciphers. These are the Feistel network, for example, the data encryption standard DES, which used to be the previous standard, uh, is based on a Feistel network. And the current uh, block cipher standard uh, by NIST, AES, is actually a substitution permutation network. So this figure on the right shows a substitution permutation network, an example of an SPN. Uh, the substitution step consists of the S boxes that are highlighted in green, and the permutation step consists of a P box and a simple uh, key mixing via XOR. So this would be referred to as a linear SPN, and I will talk about this and define it more precisely later in the talk. So I'm just establishing this so that when I talk about related work, the context is clear. So the Faisal network has been uh, long studied. There is a long line of work, starting with a seminal work of Luby and Rakoff, studying the uh, probable security of Faisal. Its security has also been considered in various other security models. Um, SPN, on the other hand, uh, is, has not been studied as, studied as extensively in the context of probable security. This is surprising given that SPNs have been around for a few decades, and a lot of the popular block ciphers, and in particular AES, is based on the substitution permutation network. So in this work, we will uh, focus on probable security of SPNs and try to address this gap. So before I talk about uh, our definitions and our results, I just want to place it in context of related work. So SPNs with secret S boxes, that S boxes which are keyed, have been studied before. Uh, now Reingold, for example, proved security of a one-round nonlinear SPN, and the ideas there were further explored in the context of domain extension. Uh, Miles and Viola also studied linear SPNs, where the S, -box, S boxes are random functions. In particular, that means that they are not invertible, and hence it's possible that the SPN itself is not invertible, and hence you know, it's not exactly a block cipher. Uh, and they showed probable security in this context. They also studied security against linear and differential attacks for SPNs with concrete S-boxes. Our work considers a, a more general setting and more general attacks, and hence is more, um, uh, captures um, additional settings than, the, than was what was done by Miles and Viola. Uh, so SPNs with public S-boxes are in fact how typically block ciphers are built. So there has been some work on SPNs with public S-boxes as well. Uh, Dodis, Stam, Steinberger, and Liu studied indifferentiability of confusion-diffusion networks. So indifferentiability is a stronger notion of security, uh, and confusion-diffusion networks can be viewed as unkeyed SPNs. So they show results only for SPNs uh, of greater than five rounds, and given that it's a stronger notion of security, they could only prove weak security bounds in that setting. And the well-known Ivan Mansour construction can also be considered to be a degenerate one-round SPN where no domain extension is happening and it's just one block, um, one blo one, uh, block of input being the, S bo being the input to the S box. So the positive results in this setting are actually implied by a special case of our results. Uh, so given that uh, this is the current state of the art, I will first define what SPN is and then mention what our results are. So SPN consists of two steps, the substitution step and the permutation step. So the substitution uh, step takes in a WN bit input, splits it into WN bit blocks, uh, and computes the S box on each of these N bit blocks. So the S box is a substitution box, which is a cryptographic permutation from N bits to N bits. So this is going to be the only source of cryptographic hardness in the construction. So in particular, notice that in the figure, the S-box is unkeyed, uh, and hence uh, illustrates that the S-box is going to be public uh, in, in our setting. So the next step is the permutation step. The permutation step takes in a WN bit uh, state again, and applies a non-cryptographic keyed permutation to the state. So uh, first note that pi k is non-cryptographic, and typically in um, in real-world block ciphers, uh, pi k is linear and usually consists of a key mixing step followed by a linear transformation. In our setting, more generally, we would allow uh, pi to be nonlinear as well. 
Uh, but I, I want to emphasize that it's non-cryptographic, and the only cryptographic hardness in the construction comes from the S-boxes. So uh, uh, the substitution permutation step together um, consists of the substitution step and the permutation step. Uh, and an R round SPN uh, is defined to be uh, as follows. Round zero consists of a permutation step where uh, there's just a non-cryptographic uh, permutation pi. And then uh, there's repeated application uh, of the substitution and permutation steps defined earlier. So this is going to be an R round SPN. So in order to analyze security of SPNs, uh, we consider the indistinguishability setting. And in particular, we analyze its security as a strong pseudo-random permutation. So we capture security against chosen plaintext and chosen uh, ciphertext attacks. Uh, in an adaptive manner. So again, the S-boxes are modeled as public random permutations here and are the only source of cryptographic hardness. So consider the following setting where there is a distinguisher D, where in the ideal world uh, has access to a random permutation P on WN bit inputs, and in the real world has access to an SPN under key K uh, with access to an S-box. So given that the S-box is unkeyed and public, uh, this traditional pseudo-randomness notion has also, in addition, um, should capture access to an S-box. So this is the uh, security notion we will consider here. In the ideal world, the distinguisher D has access to a random permutation P on WN bit inputs, and in addition, a random permutation S on N bit inputs. And in the real world, the distinguisher D has access to a random permutation S on N bit inputs, and an SPN with access to this S under key K, uh, that is a permutation on WN bit inputs. So if a distinguisher D cannot distinguish between these two worlds with high probability, we consider the SPN to be secure. So in particular, note that the distinguisher D is computationally unbounded, but can only make a bounded number of queries to its oracles. So now that we have uh, established a security notion uh, of SPNs that we consider here, I also want to mention how we categorize SPNs. So we categorize SPNs as linear and nonlinear based on the permutation pi used in the permutation step. So for example, in the linear SPN, the permutation, uh, in a linear SPN, the permutation layer will be a linear function of the WN bit round key and the state. For example, as I mentioned before, uh, a simple key mixing followed by an invertible linear transformation T uh, is considered to be uh, a linear permutation, and hence, such an SPN would be considered to be a linear SPN. So on the other hand, when the permutation layer uh, consists of a permutation pi, there is a nonlinear function on uh, either the round key or the state, then it's considered um, a nonlinear. The SPN itself is considered to be a nonlinear SPN. So now that we have defined what an SPN is, what a linear and nonlinear uh, SPN is, and what the security notion we consider it, uh, I will now mention our results. So we have the following results. Firstly, for linear SPN, we show that a two-round linear SPN is insecure, uh, and the attack is actually due to Halloway and Rogaway for fields of characteristic two, and it applies to our setting as well. We also show an attack that works for fields of arbitrary characteristic. Then we show a positive result saying that the three-round three linear SPN is secure. This is under the assumption that the keyed permutations in the permutation layer satisfy some mild technical requirements. And these requirements are satisfied by matrices with maximal branch number. Our proof technique uh, uses Petterin's H coefficient method. So in the nonlinear setting, particularly with a focus on improving the number of rounds, we can actually show that even the one round uh, nonlinear SPN is secure. We do this by identifying a combinatorial property that the key permutations in the permutation step should satisfy. Uh, these would be referred to as blockwise universal permutations, and I will focus on this more in the rest of the talk. Uh, the proof here, again, uses Petterin's H coefficient technique. Uh, and with a view to getting beyond birthday bound security, we, are, we can actually show that a two round nonlinear SPN uh, goes beyond the birthday bound, and this, again, um, uh, this relies on the H, H coefficient technique, but this is due to a refined technique uh, due to Hoang and Tosaro from Crypto16. We can also show that R round SPNs uh, lead up to uh, asymptotic security, 
And we can also extend uh, this to incorporate tweaks and multi-user security, although I won't be focusing on that um, in the rest of the talk. Uh, so before I go into uh, details uh, on a particular result, I want to mention uh, how we should interpret our results. So firstly, uh, this shows provable security of SPN-based block ciphers uh, with public S-boxes which have not been analyzed before. It also has implications for domain extension of block ciphers. For example, instead of considering the S-box to be, uh, say, an n-bit S-box where n is 8, as in the context of AES, if you consider the S-box to be instantiated by a block cipher itself, for example, AES, with a fixed key, uh, then this results in a wide block cipher uh, implying domain extension of block ciphers. I also want to mention that uh, a fixed key block cipher is essential or a public random permutation is essential to allow for public S-boxes in our setting. And to our knowledge, this is also the first construction of uh, domain extension of block cipher with beyond body security. I also want to mention a caveat of our results, which might be uh, obvious already, that our bounds are weak for SPN-based uh, block ciphers, such as AES, when the size of the S-box is small, for example, when n equals 8. Because you can think of uh, the, input, the size of the input to the S-box as a security parameter in our setting. Um, so what is required is a theory that establishes uh, the security of building block ciphers from small S-boxes. Uh, Yevgeny has some thoughts on that, and you should talk to him uh, later if you're interested in finding out more. Uh, so just to recall, these are our results for linear SPNs and nonlinear SPNs. Uh, we showed that a three-round linear SPN is secure, and I will uh, mention a few things about this uh, later in the talk. But right now, uh, I will focus mainly on the proof of security for a one-round nonlinear SPN. So in order to do that, I will first discuss the combinatorial property that the key permutations should satisfy in the permutation step. All right, so constructing nonlinear SPNs. So the tool we use uh, is what we call a blockwise universal permutations. Uh, this is a permutation pi that takes in a key k and a wn bit input x. And a key permutation pi is said to be blockwise universal if it satisfies the following three properties. The first being for any distinct inputs x and x prime, the probability over a uniform key k that a block, uh, a block of pi um, applied on key k and input x and a block of uh, uh, the output of pi applied on key k and an input x prime uh, is equal. The, uh, this should happen with low probability. And the second uh, condition that a blockwise universal permutation should satisfy is that on a wn bit input x and on key k, uh, where the key k is chosen uniformly, distinct blocks of uh, pi of k comma x should be equal with low probability. And finally, the third condition that a blockwise universal permutation should satisfy uh, is that for a uniformly chosen key k, a block of uh, pi k, k comma x should be equal to a constant c with low probability. So this notion of uh, blockwise universal permutations was in fact, considered before by Halevi, Rogaway, and others. Uh, and they, in fact, did not require the third condition uh, that we mentioned here. And this third condition is required in our setting because of the fact that we allow for public S-boxes. So given that we have this um, notion of blockwise universal permutations, uh, let's see how to actually construct a secure one-round nonlinear SPN. Uh, using those uh, blockwise universal permutations. So let pi be a keyed permutation that is blockwise universal. And let's consider the one round nonlinear SPN that is uh, shown here. So the first, uh, the round zero permutation step is just going to be an application of pi, which is blockwise universal. So followed by the substitution step, which is just uh, application of S boxes. And followed by the permutation step of round one, which is going to be pi inverse, where pi is the blockwise universal permutation. So we will see that this one round nonlinear SPN is secure up to the birthday bound. And this is true even when the same key k is used uh, both in the round zero permutation pi and the round one permutation pi inverse. So the intuition uh, for this proof uh, is as follows. 
So blockwise universality ensures that the inputs to the S boxes uh, are distinct when the distinguisher makes a construction query. So this is because if you recall, um, blockwise universality allows um, or says that on distinct inputs x and x prime, uh, any, any two blocks of pi k x and pi k x prime will be equal with low probability. And on the same input x, distinct blocks pi k comma x will be equal with low probability. So you can see that on construction queries, inputs to S box will be uh, distinct with high probability given that pi is a blockwise universal permutation. We can also uh, easily see this in the inverse direction because an inverse query would just be uh, uh, applying pi inverse of inverse, which is just uh, pi uh, being a blockwise universal permutation. So the other thing to consider, given, uh, given the fact that we are in the public S-box setting, are the distinguishers uh, queries to the S-box S directly. And again, these queries to S uh, would collide with low probability with any construction query, given the fact uh, that blockwise universality by its third condition guarantees that um, a, an output of pi k comma x will equal a constant c with low probability. So this is the intuition uh, for why this one round nonlinear SPN, where pi is a blockwise universal permutation, uh, is secure up to the birthday bound. So the next question is how to instantiate these blockwise universal permutations. So we show a few instantiations uh, in the paper. Uh, one of them uh, is a construction with n bit keys, uh, but with high degree, uh, high degree implying a high degree of the blockwise, blockwise universal permutation. And the other is a construction with longer keys, but with uh, low degree, uh, just degree being three. So now that we saw um, the construction of a secure one round nonlinear SPN, uh, with the remaining time, I just want to give intuition as to why a three round linear SPN is secure uh, using uh, the intuition provided by the blockwise universal permutations. Again, the three round linear SPN is secure only under um, some mild assumptions on the permutation step, uh, which is satisfied by matrices with maximal branch number. So recall uh, that in a linear SPN, the permutation uh, layer is a linear function of the WN bit round key and the state. Uh, and for example, as shown in the figure, uh, this uh, can be captured by simple key mixing followed by an invertible linear transformation T. Uh, informally, the security of a three round linear SPN holds because the first round of an SPN and the last round of an SPN can be considered to be a blockwise universal permutation. Then it sort of fits into uh, the pi followed by application of S boxes followed by an application of pi inverse that we saw in the nonlinear one round setting. But this intuition doesn't translate uh, formally into a proof. And this is because the blockwise universal permutation, uh, if it's a one round linear SPN, that implies that it includes a substitution step as well. In particular, the S boxes there are public and the blockwise universal permutation by definition is keyed. Uh, so even though the intuition um, kind of tells you why it can be secure, we need to uh, go through a dedicated proof uh, to show uh, the security of a three round linear SPN. So again, uh, just to emphasize, uh, we show uh, results on both linear and nonlinear SPNs. So a three round linear SPN uh, is secure up to the birthday bound. Uh, assuming some uh, mild assumptions on the permutation step. In order to reduce the number of rounds, we focus on nonlinear SPNs, where we show even a one-round nonlinear SPN is secure. And furthermore, we can uh, increase the security of, um, and, and go beyond the birthday bound in the nonlinear SPN setting. So the takeaway is that uh, provable security of SPNs have not uh, been a focus uh, for, for a while, uh, especially in the public S-box setting. Uh, so we focus on that. And also, um, our results imply uh, domain extension of block ciphers. In particular, we show domain extension beyond with birthday, beyond birthday bound security. Thank you. Thank you.